What's up guys? Thank you for joining. Today I'm going to teach you one of the key concepts to master DAX and Power BI. I'm talking about the context transition and I have also a really really good example so you don't want to miss this. But before we get started, if this is the first time you stop by this channel, please don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss anything. So now, let's do this. Before we go over the examples, a couple of points here worth mentioning. Context transition is an operation performed by calculate and also calculate table in the definition of the new filter context under which it evaluates its expression. In other words, we need to have these two functions to perform a context transition. And also we need to have a row context because the idea is to transition from row context to filter context with these two functions. The second point here, it's worth remembering that when you invoke a measure from a DAX expression, it's automatically surrounded by calculate. This is also a really important point. The third point, a row context exists whenever an iteration is happening in a table. Sometimes we use iterators or sometimes we can just create a calculated table and automatically we have raw context. The final point here that I want to talk to you about is when calculate is executed in a raw context, it creates a filter context with a filter for each of the columns in the currently iterated table. Having as a reference this concept, you might want to be very careful when you have large tables. And also you can explore these definitions here, these concepts. I'm going to share with you this file so you can explore that. Something really, really important here, if you're not familiar with the raw context or the filter context, it's highly recommended to stop this video and check those concepts first. I'm going to share with you guys the links. I have two tutorials about those concepts as well. Now let's take a look at the examples. So the question that we want to solve here is to create a calculated column to find cells for each record in the cells table. So let's select the sales table. Let's go over data here because I want to see the data and next right click new column. So we're going to name this new column cells and we're going to be creating here a calculated column just as a reference. Okay. For cells. And then if you can see cells is going to be quantity times unit price. So we're going to use here this function, the SAMEX function because we're going to be iterating each row here, okay? And then we're going to be referencing the cells table. And here, it's going to be quantity times unit price, okay? Close parenthesis, and let's see what happens. Let's hit enter. So what is going on there? As you can see, here we are seeing the total, the total cells for the whole model. Why is that? Because the row context doesn't filter the row context iterates in order to find the right amount here for each record we have to use guess what which function of course the calculated function so let's see what happens if we surround this expression by calculate so let's do that real quick fingers crossed perfect now we are getting the right results so what's happening here here like I said before, the iterator is doing the calculation, but it's doing for the whole amount, the total amount, because the row context doesn't filter, the row context iterates. Now, if we wanna change this behavior, we have to transition from the row context to the filter context. In order to achieve that, we have to use calculate, and that's what's happening here. And now, as you can see, we are getting the right results. So now let's go back to report. So we are good with the first question. The second question is create a calculated column to track performance by each product in the product table. So let's select the product table, go over data view again, product table. And now we need to create here a calculated column as well. So right click new column. Something really important here is that the product column has unique products as you can see here. Okay, so let's name this uh, sales performance by product. Okay, and then we're going to use variables here. Check this out. Total sales. Also, if you're not familiar with variables, I have a tutorial about variables. I'm going to share with you this link as well. And here for total sales, we're going to use the previous expression. 
So you're going to remember this one. Sumx and then sales and here quantity times unit price, correct? It's right there. And as you remember, when we have an iterator, we are just having the row context. So the row context is not filtering. That's why it's giving you the total amount here for the total model. So please keep that in mind. So let's keep going here. Another variable, we're gonna call this current sales, okay? Current sales. And then we're gonna be using this expression. Check this out, control V. But guess what? We need to add a filter context there. In order to do so, we have to use the calculate function. So let's do that, calculate there, and then there you go. So now we are getting the current cells when we surround the expression by calculate. Let's keep going. So let's use another variable here and let's call this ratio, just 5%. And then another variable, let's call this result, okay? And here, let's use if. So let's use a condition here. If current cells, I'm referencing the variable here, is greater or equal to total cells, this is the variable, okay? Times the ratio, which is 5%. It's right there. So what happens if that's true? If that's true, so we're gonna be saying here that this product is performing awesome. So outstanding performance. If that's not the case, uh, this product is then okay. So, okay, performance. There you go, plus parentheses. And let's keep going. So the last part of the variables, if you remember, is return. And here we have to reference result, the last variable that we just created. So let's approve these changes and let's see what happens. Fingers crossed, my friends. Boom. So now we have these results here. As you can see, we have unique product names here and we have some products that perform really well. The last ones right there. And also we have products that are doing okay. But there you have it. Let's go back to report. So we solved this question and now let's move on to the next question. So the next question is create a calculated column to find total sales for each product in the product table. So this is quite straightforward as well. Let's go over product here, right click, new column. So here we are basically recreating what we did in the first question. So this is gonna be sales, again, parentheses, but this is gonna be the calculated column for the product table, okay? Equal here, and guess what? So we're gonna be using here the iterator sum x again, referencing sales, and then quantity, you might remember this, times unit price, close parentheses. So I have a question here. What happens if we leave this as is? So we're gonna be getting the total amount because remember the raw context iterates, it doesn't filter. So we are getting here the total amount. Let's approve this change and see what I'm talking about here. So it's loading. If you go to this column here, let's go to the data view real quick. See right there, it's giving you the total amount. And what is the reason for that again? The reason for that is that this pressure is iterating. There is a raw context here. In order to make this work, we have to add here, calculate. So let's let calculate here, and then close parentheses for calculate. So now you can see the right result because calculate is changing the raw context to the filter context. Bingo, we are good. So now let's go back to report. Check this out. Let's add a couple of fields here. For rows, let's add here, let's go product, sales performance. And then for values, let's select for now. So let's go over product and let's select this one right here. The one that we just created. And also here we can add product here, product name, okay? To make this more interesting. Check this out. Now, as you can see, you have there the specific amounts for each product. The products are doing okay. And also the products are performing really well. Outstanding performance. Perfect, so now let's move on to the next example. This is also quite straightforward and I already mentioned this before. Remember here, every measure reference always has an implicit calculate surrounding it. Because of calculate, a measure reference generates an implicit context transition 
if executed in the presence of any row context. What is the question here? Find the total cells in the model by using a measure. So what we wanna do here is right click, new measure. We are creating measures now, okay? And let's call this measure, so let's call this measure just cells and then as a reference, let's call this cells measure. Here, we're gonna use the SUMX function again, I need a writer. And then here, we're gonna be referencing the cells table, quantity again, times unit price. Perfect, close parenthesis, and let's hit enter, and let's see what happens. So nothing happens here yet, because remember measures take action once we add them into a visual. I want you guys to think a little bit more about this process. So remember here, each measure by default is surrounded by calculate, like it says right here. So what does it mean? Do we need to add calculate here to make this work? No, because the program, the engine is automatically adding calculate. We cannot see it, but it's already there. So we don't have to add anything there. So that should be working perfectly fine because we have an iterator here. And because this is a measure, we don't have to add calculate. So let's see if this works perfectly. Let's select this visual and then let's drag sales measure into this visual and let's see what happens. And here, if we want, we can also add, for the example, we can add just date here. Check this out. As you can see, this is working perfectly fine. There you have it, my friends. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you wanna keep sharpening your Power BI skills, check these tutorials out. And also, give me a thumbs up, share with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe, as always. Thank you, guys, and see you next time.